Hey guys, it's Ross, and in today's video, we're actually going to be thinning out some plants, thinning out some seedlings. We're going to be starting some seeds as well. We got radishes and beets. We have Swiss chard, perpetual spinach. So I also want to thin out the tomato plants, and I just kind of want to show you guys this process. You know, nothing too uh, too crazy here. Nothing too um, out of this world advanced. You know, this is pretty some beginner stuff here, but. That's what I'm doing this time of the year is we're starting a lot of seeds. I do want to talk about what's going on in this particular tray because we've got a lot of different things that have been multi-sowed. And we'll kind of talk about that as we go along. So for now, I'm just going to thin this out. We got something called Yokata Na, which could be multi-sown probably. We've got um, broccoli here. We've got Komatsuna, Tatsoi. For sure the broccoli needs to be thinned out to about one plant. So we're just taking the scissors, coming on in here, and cutting those off, you know. Um, same thing with the broccoli and stuff down here. Um, the Chinese broccoli, the standard broccoli that we used to, we're usually seeing in the stores, regardless of what it is, we need to make sure that stuff's thinned out. And I'm really just taking this off. You should kind of wait until you see true leaves, right? These are just the cotyledons, I believe they're called. But I think it's okay. I don't think these guys are gonna die. Um, so we'll do that like that. We'll just cut them off. We're not gonna pull them out because if we pull them out, we're gonna actually damage the root system of the plant that we're leaving in there. So just thinning things out. Let's plant some seeds now. We got some beets, a variety here called uh, Cylindra. Now, I was gonna find a beet that you didn't have to cook. I've tried the row seven beet, the badger flame beet, I think it's called, at my buddy Dom's house. Uh, they were very good. And you can eat them like a carrot. They're kind of, taste like carrots. Uh, you can eat them raw. And you don't really necessarily have to go through the trouble of cooking them, but you do for these other beets here, these cylindra beets. And I think I'm okay with that. You know, I think I'm going to do somewhere around uh, probably about four to six beets per cell. And that's what will keep them at, you know. And the reason I'm doing such a high number is because we're multi-sowing. And this is something that Charles Dowding, a market gardener up in England, he talks about quite often. And whenever you're trying to get vegetable advice, market gardeners know they have some really great information. Plus, they're always trying to promote themselves and a lot of them have videos. You know, it's important for them as a smaller farmer with less land to be promoting themselves you know they don't sell things wholesale they sell things locally most of the time and it's not really something um, you know they can afford not to do I would I would think you know if I was gonna be a market gardener looking at this from my own business background in no way would I not have a YouTube channel uh, a website maybe even some courses down the road, something that is gonna get more attention towards my business. Uh, but thankfully, I don't do that, <laughs> right? I don't have a market garden, it's a lot of work. And you really have to respect those guys that do that sort of thing. So we've already made holes in these different cells here. We took a pencil, we jabbed the hole in there, um, and I just slipped in the beet cell or the beet seeds in each hole. We're gonna cover them up here, and then we're gonna give them a nice little watering because the soil here is a bit dry. We had seeded this stuff here a bit earlier. We did a video on all this. This is all of the, you know, all that broccoli and rapini and different Asian greens that we talked about, Swiss chard, all kinds of things. And look at the growth of these. We just need to thin them out a little bit. Some things I won't, like the peas. We have a nice little row of peas here. That's gonna be kept as two per cell. I may have to get some of this stuff out of here. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I don't want the peas to get too root bound or really root bound at all, but 
most of the stuff still hasn't shown its true leaves yet or they're just now starting to like the Mizuna down here um, but it's really important that at this stage we could transplant things but we want to let them grow a little bit let them show their first or second set of true leaves and we're gonna get them out into the garden perhaps we'll harden them off for a week at this younger stage it may not be as necessary but we're gonna put these guys in the ground March 15th here in my area today is a uh, February 26th so you know I usually start these things if I'm gonna plant them on March 15th which is very early a very experimental date here in my area our last frost is May 1st so we're doing we're planting our cool oven crops a whole month and a half before that date and normally I would get these cool oven crops out on April 1st but because we're we got a row cover here we're gonna put on them um, they're much smaller plants I think they'll be a much hardier I'm also gonna plant them a bit deeper right I'm putting them in the compost um, it's very easy to work that soil and get them in there a bit deeper so for that those guys will be alright the tomatoes here these were started February 1st so it's been almost a month now almost a whole month and look at this growth it's really incredible um, I've thinned them out already once we're gonna thin them out again and I'm just gonna come in here and take out the smaller one that's really all it is and this really is a process of uh, selection here this is really um, pretty nice and you can see some of these guys have actually formed pretty thick stems and that's what you want to see and this is what le is what's left over this actually is not a bad plant you could stick this in soil and this could actually root for you um, you know you got to keep the humidity in the environment quite high but that's all we're doing we're coming here and we're just taking one of these out making things less crowded I think certainly things are a bit too crowded in this little space here and then what we're gonna do actually very soon because what I've noticed on the side of the pot see that's a root right there so they're becoming root bound in these three inch by three inch pots we're gonna up pot these into some grow bags and really get some huge tomatoes we'll plant them sideways in a trench rather than having them be nice and tall and floppy and real leggy these guys will be put in a trench and form a huge root system at a very young age in the season so that's all we're doing today guys we got a lot of things to plant a lot of things to do catch you guys for tomorrow's video take care